<laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to La Bienemi Virtual Knit Night. I'm here with my hosts, Julia Taylor and Zachary Wilder, and I'm Amy of La Bienemi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> We're super excited for this. Um, I guess we'll call this an episode of Knit Night. I don't know. This evening's Knit Night. We have our special guests, Tin Q, uh, Tin Q Lam and Sylvia Watts Cherry, who both worked with me on the Worsted book that I released in November. And I'm super excited because we have Zach, who's back hosting with us. He's been away for the last couple months traveling. So we're going we're gonna to do a little catch-up session with Zach. We're going to show what, we're, we, what we've been knitting. I guess I will start. <laughs> so last week, if you guys tuned in when we were with Les Garçons, I was swatching on the newest color of Cory Confetti. And I started the swatch at knit night and I finished it. And so now it's been blocked and here's what it looks like. Wow. Super gorgeous. And actually, I think I'm going to turn on my tabletop camera here so you guys can get a better look because that camera is nicer. There we go. Oh, lovely. Mm. Out here so you can see I've been playing around with some mohair and here is what the newest color of confetti looks like it is called framboise so it's this is really luscious uh, raspberry color that I developed mm. on Cory mm. confetti and so here's my swatch of framboise by itself without any mohair oh, yeah. Yeah, so we made a custom mix of recycled um, ends that came from our atelier that we sent for Fomboise. A little bit of neon and a little bit of knot, and it came out really well. And when it arrived, I was talking to Julia that I was like, oh, I have to go pick out the mohair colors because I really love knitting the Cory confetti <laughs> with mohair. So, let's see, let's zoom back out here. I picked four colors to swatch here can you guys see those okay so yes. this top one here is lannister so i picked out lannister mohair to go with the framboise and i feel like it's like such a great match for the actual base color of framboise mm -hmm. um i have to remember this incorrectly this one's amy's flashy lipstick so this is amy's yes. flashy lipstick look at that so that's this my is, favorite oh, yeah. this really like bright kind of pink red turns the Cory Confetti Framboise to this tone. Mm -hmm. And then down here, I took Julia's favorite color, which is Sari, and paired it here. And it brings a really nice neon pink tone to mm. the Framboise. And then last, I brought in Lee's. And Lee's was actually the inspiration for this color. Um, when I color matched the fleece with the mill that makes this, we actually started out with this tone. And after we brushed in all the recycled bits um, into the into the yarn, it always darkens the yarn a little bit. And so it became this color. And so I thought holding it together, it actually brings it back to a Lee's tone when we mm -hmm. use the mohair silk. Mm. So that's what I have been working on since last weekend. Um, I also want to sneak peek to you guys a new Fox Thoughts yoke that we have been developing for a little while and that we're going to release soon. So this one here oh. is called Dark Kitsune. And we're going to be releasing this yoke soon um, in the Fox Thoughts yokes bundles online. So super exciting. You can use all of our dark blue and dark gray based colors for the yoke. I would recommend Winterfell, Omega, Isle of Erin, which is like the color that Zach is wearing in his sweater right now, would be super gorgeous to go with this yoke, which is called Dark Kitsune. Mm. <laughs> All righty. Julie, what have you been knitting? So I'm working on a test knit, but I don't think it's secret. I'm going to show it. I don't think I'll it's secret it. either because there's been, I've no, seen he's already shown it. Yeah, people have already uh, posted some photos, so I may not make it to the deadline, but I'm test knitting a pattern for James Watts, um, and it's called the Pure Mesh Pullover. It's going to really soon, um, and so this is the what it's going to be like. It's Felix 
on eight millimeter needles. <laughs> so it creates this, I added mohair because I thought why not, but, um, and yeah, so this is a sweater. Actually not knitting on it right now because I made a mistake and I need to frog and it's lace. Last time I did that, I created this hole. So <laughs> I'm keeping it for this weekend and I will work on it um, at tête reposée, as we say in French, which uh, means um, when I don't have any distractions and I can frog and go back and because I don't have the right number of stitches to finish my row. So <laughs> that's my tale of woe for tonight. <laughs> I'm like sweating, like the combination of like frog and lace <laughs> together in the same sentence. Like I'm like <laughs> beads of sweat so coming down I'm my face. Using Felix in as if. Yes, as if. Awesome. Um, if you guys don't know, Julia is our resident pink lover here at L Let Me and Amy. So mm -hmm. everyone needs one. I met. <laughs> I love yellow. She loves pink. We get along really well. <laughs> Are you knitting anything else, Julia? So many things, um, too many, uh, because it's the beginning of the year. So I thought I would really like to finish some of my whips from last year, uh, which I have a few. Um, lately, I've been knitting on my sholography and I'm just obsessed with it again. The Stephen West's Mystery Can from last year. I, so I knit about two thirds of it and then I, I just, needed a little break so I set it aside but um I'm working on it and uh, I'm looking forward to finishing it I know exactly I want to do the same border that you did on your sample Amy yeah uh, because I'm not a fan of Stephen's border um actually we could do a little show and tell because I know Zach just sure. finished his shawlography yeah. but I did this, Yay! Board. this border done Zach has his yeah Zach Yay. Should I should have wrote mine I did it with a traditional border. Um, yeah. I obviously need to weave some, some stuff in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do like it now that I see it finished. When it came out, I was like, meh. Um, and I love the Fantastic uh, border so much. Um, Amy decided to do the Fantastic border on her sholography, and I absolutely want to do that on mine. So yeah. I have my Fantastic because I wear it all the time. I've been it's wearing true. it. Yeah. Um, and that's and so a, I'm gonna. Just to say that, like, Zach, Julie, and I like to coordinate with Justin as well. And we make kits for um, Stephen's Mystery Cal every year. So this is the second year. But we also yes. made Fantastic kits as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, and we still have those online. So that's the Julia kit. So if you guys love that and you're like a pink lover like Julia, and that's the Zach I'm kit. I'm obsessed with it. That we have for shawlography. All right, Zach, tell us about finishing shawlography. Actually, you know, the border's grown on me after I saw yours. I yeah, it actually looks really nice now that I see it. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think that it's nice to have like uh, a few colors that kind of make a gradient um, on the border because I think it was originally kind of designed for to have that gradient and then like a pop of color. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it, it does kind of it, it creates a lot of motion on the on the on the border. But what's so what's so easy with um, with Westnitz like a lot of these shawls is that they're 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 modular so you can always just kind of add um, some you could always kind of change if there's some other type of of border that you like you can usually you can usually tack it on which is yeah. which is fun. I always encourage people to like explore and yeah. and try to get out and to just like make make your knitting your own That's in so that true. respect. Hmm. So what have you so Zach you've been gone for two months and you haven't been here to host knit night with us so we need a like a catch-up session here. <laughs> oh my god I'm gonna like weave you a tail. Um yeah <laughs> I was supposed to be with you guys the last time and um, in France, I mean, I'm sure some of you all have seen the news and you're also experiencing this in your own country, but there's a lot of coronavirus around. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm an opera singer, so I've been called in um, to, I haven't gotten sick, so I keep getting called in to replace tenors like all over the place to in in their productions um and so i got called into a production that was during the, the last midnight um 
and ran over, did that, and then was like on tour. And then while I was on tour, I got a, and I came back to Paris, like right as I was coming into the door, my partner tested positive for COVID. So I just kind of oh, no. shut the door. Because <laughs> <and laughs> um, I still had like concert and recording to do. So I'm still away from my apartment. I'm, I'm at my friend's place uh, in the north of Paris, um, staying, staying away. Um, uh, so I could do um, some auditions and also be be ready for some other upcoming stuff. So yeah, and there's lots of people who are like not able to see friends and family. I have to wait until Monday, uh, Monday or Tuesday until I can see my partner. Oh my god! Um, but all my yarn is like with him. <laughs> so all all I have with me is like um, socks because that was I I had him like throw the socks outside the door. <laughs> Send me That's, my whips. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ah, throw me some whips. I like had I just my finished, <laughs> I had just finished this and I had just finished his sweater. So like I I didn't have any knitting with me. So I was like, ah, throw me my socks so I can like be away, you know. That's awesome. Um, what pattern are you knitting with your socks? I'm not sure we're gonna be able to see it with that neon yellow, but I know. Um I'm actually not knitting a pattern, but it's uh it's just one I'm making up. Um it's yeah, I just was Is just it, making this up. Is it chevrons it, or no? Like I can't tell. It's in like a lozenge. Oh, uh, nice! I love it. I can see it now. Yeah, very cute. It's just done with knit and pearl. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, when you know your sock size, you can um, you can just sort of throw a, a stitch onto a sock that that you like. And um, you know, usually I cast on seventy two for my sock. <laughs> Sixty four. Um, that's my cast on. I know exactly four, right. like how many rows to knit for the foot and everything, the depth of the heel. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah, I went on to it. There's there's some uh, websites that have like stitch uh, dictionaries, and there's one like Stitch Monkey that I went on to, and I found oh. the laws of one. I thought that was kind of cool. I didn't know about so, that. So um, that's a fun. If you know your size, your sock size, you can just kind of find something that has the correct amount and just sort of throw something together. Yeah, absolutely. So we just have a, a comment that just popped up in the chat, which is nice. Um, Janice is asking, what's your favorite sock patterns? Oh, um, there's one called Stellan that I really like. Um, uh, I have to look I think up. I remember that pattern. Stellan. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember you knitted it. <laughs> no, you knitted when you worked here. Yeah, I did. Um, let me see. I'm looking through my like Ravelry. <laughs> Well, um, while Zach is yeah. looking, I can tell you my favorite sock pattern. It's the monkey sock, which is on Nitty. I think it's a. I think it's a, still a free pattern on Nitty.com. It came out like years ago. I love knitting that one. That one's really fun to knit. Mm -hmm. um, Julia, do you? Julia, you don't knit socks, do you? Um, I start them. <laughs> I don't really finish them, um, but when I do, I just do um, vanilla socks. Mm. Mm. But I, I knit hats instead of socks. I just I can't deal with having to do the heel. Um, I usually have a, a hat on the go, and that's my um, uh, public transport project, like my tram project. Because hats, you you just go around and around and around. Yeah. Oh, and I finished one recently. It has Kumo. It's oh, a yeah, sari. Really nice. It, oh. And it is Kashmirino held double with a strand of Kumo. That's Two right. strands of Kashmirino and one strand of Kumo. It is the best. <laughs> it is literally the best. Super warm, which is good because it's really cold here. Yeah. Um, I wanted to I wanted to get you to tell us about your sweater, Zach. Oh, yeah, somebody was literally just messaging me about it. It's um, this is a pretty simple um sweater uh called Wintergrüne, um, and it's um, it, it's it's I love saddle shoulder um sweaters because I think they're really flattering, yeah. Um, and, as a construction, and uh, the Wintergrüne is by I'm like on oh my mouth. It's by uh, a Stine uh, Johansson. Um, it's a Danish uh, designer um, that I found because it's actually kind of hard sometimes to find men's like simple men's sweater but you can see that in the back that you create this like sort of saddle on top of the shoulder and then and then you knit 
the new knit down. Yeah. And I, I knit it in um, a mix of mohair and uh, cash merino in Isle of Aaron. So gorgeous. Yeah. So just that everyone knows, if we don't get to a chance to pop um, comments into the chat, all knitted items that are mentioned in Knit Night will be posted in the show notes when I put the replay on YouTube. So don't worry if you like miss the name of this pattern or that pattern. I will definitely get those up when we put the replay on. So, well, Zach, it's really great to have you back. Now we just need to get Justin back here. So maybe he... I know. Yeah, maybe he can hear us saying... That like, might be hard. <laughs> so I thought that we could um, bring forward... Q and Sylvia. So bear with me. I've been doing Zoom for over two years and I feel like it's like brand new every time I do this. So there we go. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so these are my special guests um, tonight, Q and Sylvia. They worked with me on my worsted book, my first book project. And I, for this first for this first book collaboration, I reached out to designers that I had previously worked with before. So I had worked with Q <clears throat> on issue 35 of Pom Pom Magazine, which had the cover of the Fox Thought sweater on it. And um, I was really like, she had created a beautiful, there it is, yay! <laughs> I always try to get prepared and then I'm not. <laughs> Thank you, Q. She created a really beautiful wrap that like when we were going through the submissions for the magazine that really stood out to me and I was like I immediately was like this one has to go in and so I approached Q and asked her if she would design an accessory a scarf specifically for the book because I feel like um the way that she designs her scarves with uh, with her artistic background, it just really brings something to the design. And so her design is Asawa. So if you have the book, Asawa is here. And she designed this in three sizes, a small, medium, and large. So Julia's got the, <clears throat> the small size. I'm wearing the medium size here. And if you guys visited my blog today, I updated with a new blog post because I we just finished recently the wrap version of Asawa, which is quite incredible. It's like this really beautiful piece that uses five skeins of yarn. And you know me, I love fades, I love gradients. And so I picked five colors of Cory Worsted for this wrap version of Asawa. The colors that I used for the wrap are French Gray, Avoine, Bone, uh, High Garden, and then I ended with Sandstone at the end. I wrote all about it on my blog, so you guys can head over there. I also um, included the information on how to fade the five colors together um, to work the fade sequence. So Q, hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to have you here. I thought that we could start out by letting you introduce yourself to everyone and tell us a little bit about your knitting origin story and anything else you'd like to share. Sure. I So in addition to being a knitwear designer, I am an artist. Um, I My interest in making clothes started at a very young age because my, my mom is a very talented seamstress. She worked in the alterations department um, of a local department store for about two decades. Um, so she taught me how to use a sewing machine and some hand sewing skills. And I remember in high school, I, I actually made clothes, just creating my own patterns. So they weren't terribly polished, but I wore them. And then I got busy with college and I, I stopped sewing. I started making clothes. Um, after college, I lived in Japan for a few years. And after that, I moved to the Washington, D.C. area. And that's where I learned how to knit in 2010. Oh. I work near DuPont Circle, for, for those of you who are familiar with D.C. Um, and there's a, there's a yarn shop in DuPont Circle called Loop Yarn Works. 
So I took my, my very first knitting class there. It was two sessions, I think. Um, learned the basics, casting on, binding off, knit pearl. And I, you know, knitting really spoke to me and I really loved it. And I think because my background as an artist, I, I just love experimenting. It comes very naturally to me. So I started designing and I published my very first design in 2015, which I have the magazine here. So my very first pattern was published in this issue of Pom Pom. I remember that issue. It's called the Pianissimo Scarf, um, which you can see here. Oh, yes, I remember. Yeah. And I still see people knitting it today. So I that makes me very happy to see. <laughs> Um, and yes, I've been knitting ever since. That's great. Um, <clears throat> can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind behind the Asawa scarf? Yes, absolutely. Now, when when Amy first contacted me about um, contributing a design for worse that I had already been tinkering with this design. And I will show you, I think this is the swatch I first showed you that first time we talked. I still have it. Ah, yes, I remember. <laughs> I remember, yes. So you see here, it has a very wide garter stitch border. And, um, and Amy and I discussed this and we decided to go for a narrow border, which is also lovely. And the inspiration. So let's see, I think it was about 2013 or so. I was I went to Aeromont, which is a school for arts and crafts in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And I took a sculptural knitting class with the artist Adrian Sloan. And she brought this book with her um, about the work of Ruth Asawa, who makes these among many, many things, but she makes these beautiful sculptures where the technique and the architecture is very much like knitted fabric. Um, so they're created with loops that are interlocked together. And I fell in love with her work. And here you can get a sense of scale. Oh, wow. Um, and Besides the fact that it looks like knitting, which of course spoke to me as a knitter. Um, one of the things I really love about uh, Ruth's sculptures is that it is, it has that two dimensional quality of being lines, but it's a sculpture. So it has the three dimensionality, um, but because they're made of loops, it lets in light. So there's a lot of play with light and shadow. And when you see them in a room, um, it creates these beautiful shadows on the wall that are just constantly shifting with the way the light shifts. And I, I really love those relationships of how all of these elements work together. So in the scarf, that's what I wanted to do with the knitting elements. Um, this is one of my swatches in Cory Worsted. Yep. So it has the, it has the garter stitch and then it has the lines of stockinette and cables. Um, I really love cables because I love texture. And I find that in many designs, cables tend to dominate. It's, it's like the prominent feature of a design. And with this scarf, I really wanted to make sure that they all get to shine. Like I wanted the garter stitch to shine. I didn't want it just to be a background. Mm. Um, and I wanted the cables to play really well with all the other elements um, so that they're all, it's all interesting and it keeps your eye moving around um, among the different elements. So that's the inspiration. I love that. Um, I love that the relationship with uh, Ruth Asawa and the design, it like completely makes sense. Everything that you've explained. What's equally beautiful too is the wrong side of your scarf, which we photographed in the book as well. It's just, yes. it's so neat, the how the cables look on the backside and the texture mm -hmm. stitches. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
So how do you figure out the shapes for your garments? So what, uh, what, uh, what inspires those? So far, I have only designed accessories. Um, and I would say it really depends on the stitch pattern. It's, it's, I usually work with the stitch pattern first, and then I think about what it wants to be or what it would look mm. good in. Um, so for this one, it's because it, for Asawa, it has such strong lines. I kept it as a, as a rectangular piece, um, which has, I really love the way it starts and ends. This, so this is the beginning. Yeah. Um, and you see it creates kind of these arrow-like points. Mm -hmm. And that just seemed fitting for a rectangular scarf. Um, but I have I have a new design. It's it's also a scarf. It will be published with Making Stories later this year. And for this one, it has pointed ends. So this is this is not the color it's going to be in for the magazine, but this is one of the original swatches I made for it. Um, so it has this pointed end on either either oh, I love end. That. That's so cool. Um, and again, I, I really love lines and texture and visual movement. So it has these cables and again, garter. I love garter. <laughs> hey, I said that I was garter stitch. Someone asked me a question. If I was a knit technique, I said, I'm garter stitch. Cause I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, and again, it's just playing around with with swatching, I do a lot of swatching when I design because so would I'm- you, Would you consider yourself a process knitter or a product knitter? Both, but I lean towards process. Yeah, what about you, Zach? Uh, yeah, I'm more on the process side. I really enjoy like the act of knitting. I have some friends who want to just knit as fast as possible in order to get to the, the, the finished object, but- um, yeah, I'd say probably process. Yeah, what about you, Julia? I would say a product knitter, uh, that because like I feel the urge to cast on everything, and I always have like all these <laughs> ideas, and oh, I need to cast this on, and oh, wouldn't this pattern look great in this yarn or in this color, or you know, like I have all these, but then I cast on too many things, and I don't finish anything which makes me a process knitter by default <laughs> but this is like uh, not what i want <laughs> so definitely a product knitter and what about you sylvia product or process i'm definitely product i like to finish i'm monogamous and product i like to complete tasks so i i find it very stressful having lots around me that's not completed and <laughs> I, can I do still so like the process, but I think I need to finish it. <laughs> I can, that's I'm the total relatable. opposite. I need multiple projects because oh. there's usually one sweater project that takes me forever to finish. Mm -hmm. So I like some smaller projects that I can work on and finish more quickly and have that sense of satisfaction. <laughs> I don't count socks as a project. I always have socks on the needles. There's yeah. always, look, I have one on my desk right here. Like whenever I just need to like empty my mind, I just I have a sock. I have one on my desk here. I have one on my nightstand. I have one in my purse. I have one in everywhere. So it's just, yeah. But yeah, I totally feel that. Like when I'm knitting something complicated, I have to have something easy on the side so that when I need to rest my brain, I just kind of go over and do the, knit the sock for a little bit. Can I just say that I love this like comparison to like mon monogamy and, and like polyamory on like the Kinsey scale of like knitting? <laughs> okay, so I've been knitting for over 25 years. And I want to say that when I first started knitting, I was like Julia. I would cast on everything all the time. I remember at one point I had like 22 whips and I was like... I can't do this anymore. That's not. Oh, yeah. well, it basically takes at least a year to finish anything. Oh. That's why I knit something and then I put it on a timeout, start something else. And then I feel the need to go back. And like right now I have a sweater. I started in March of last year. I have like literally one sleeve 
to knit, which Wait, is not so much when you see. It's the Darren by Jacqueline C. Slack, All right, and you it's gotta glorious. finish that. Let's let's yeah. all motivate it's her to finish it. <laughs> Felix and Moer held double in fluoromorganite. Like it oh my is gosh, amazing. you have to finish that. <laughs> Just too, too many whips, too oh, many whips. But um, in the chat, um, Marianne says, I aspire to be like Sylvia, and I do too. I just need to cast on everything all the time. Yeah, I can't do that. I'm kind of like that. I'm a monogamous knitter now. I, I, I try to get through the one project that I'm working on. Um, it's hard. It gets boring, you know, but it's always good to finish. All right, so Q, let me ask you this question. If you could be a knitting technique... What knitting technique would represent you? Anything that's interesting on both sides of the fabric. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Very open answer. <laughs> have you, um, Q, have you thought about doing um, cables that show cables on both sides? That would be quite nice. It's sort of, oh. <laughs> I haven't, it's, so this new scarf design that's coming out later this year, um, I very much focus on more on how it looks on the front side, Yeah. Mm -hmm. but it does have cables on the back side, which are, oh. they're more organic. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, but I have yet to design something that is very super structured on both sides. Yeah. Maybe right. coming soon. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe yeah. Sylvia is like oh, planted an idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got so, an idea with your um, your scarf. Actually, it would look really nice as a sweater. I like, you know, just the texture. It would look really nice. You know, I'm I, was, <laughs> I was thinking of Intarsia as well. The middle, every alternate one would be a different color, it's just going in and out. I might have to do that now. Oh, <laughs> I can see Amy's eyes lighting up. My eyes just lit up like, maybe we can do a collab where... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like... I yeah, Sylvia, I... Off, I thought that. <laughs> I would love... Sylvia, I would love to see what you would do with a version of Asawa. Right, that, you're on. <laughs> 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 I know your brain works differently from mine. I'm since I'm so since I love texture so much, most of my projects tend to be monocolor. Mm -hmm. And it's and I remember when I worked with Amy on Pom on that issue of Pom Pom, it really pushed me to work outside of my comfort zone because Amy was like, what about a fade and holding <laughs> two yarns together? <laughs> okay I, I can do this yeah <laughs> I did not realize I mean honestly when I saw it I saw the 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 structural lines that you had built into that into that shawl and I was like and I looked at Steve I was like that has to be put onto a fade and he was like yes 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 and so it did it looks gorgeous yeah and here here's the picture of it oh fab Wow, it was super fast. You can't see the texture well, but you can see the different yeah, colors. Yeah, it went all the way to the, like this dark, fiery, like orange, and it was really gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so is there a designer out there that inspires you, Q? Oh, gosh. So many. <laughs> <laughs> I will say um, one designer whose work I... I actually have I'm knitting two of her designs right now I'll show you one of them um her name is Einar and I do not know how to pronounce her last name I will attempt it so Einar I, I'm just gonna apologize in advance if I mispronounce your last name it's Birkin Bayeva and she's known as uh, Mama's Teddy Bear on Instagram yes, yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, but Einar has very interesting constructions in her designs. And to me, I still consider myself a newer knitter. I've only been knitting for 10 years. And there's, I feel like the knitting world is so vast with mm -hmm. so many different techniques mm -hmm. and stitches that I'm, you know, I'm constantly learning something new. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I'm 
knitting right now is, oh, it's dark. So you're not gonna be able to see it very well, but it's a hat. I think this is actually my first top-down hat that I'm knitting. Um, and it has this twisted stitch pattern that grows mm -hmm. from the crown. So it starts with a provisional cast on. So what happens at the yes. top? It's it's a very small number of stitches, so it just gets closed up. Okay. Once you're done. Hold shut. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Very nice. And sorry, I was just gonna say, um, I know this designer and I follow her on Instagram, so we'll add that information into the show notes because she is really making some cool designs. Yes. Like, you know. And she just released a new pattern in collaboration with Pearl Soho. It's called the Cross Current Pullover. And I'm I'm swatching for that in this beautiful Nadia colorway. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, but the sweater has a very interesting construction. So I'm, you know, I'm excited to get down the needles and see how it works. Um but yeah, I, you know, I love, you know, as much as I love designing, I also love knitting patterns by other designers because I get to learn and that, you know, that enhances my own designing skills. Mm. And it's, I, I, so this is where I'm both a process and a product knitter because yes, I can learn techniques just by making little samples and little swatches. Mm. But when it comes to learning techniques, I really love doing bigger projects mm -hmm. so i'm learning the techniques as i am making something that will be a completed object yeah no that makes sense yeah and coming back to reading patterns i've actually kind of since i started on this book adventure i have gotten really into reading patterns julie and i have spent like the last couple months reading and rereading the worsted patterns over and over again in english and then in french and now oh. I've, i'm kind of dipping my toe into designing so like i'm reading patterns i mean q i remember reading your pattern out loud and just being like such clean lines you know sometimes you just you just feel it you know when you read a pattern and things like that so yeah i mean you learn so much from reading a pattern you can learn so much from like just watching a video tutorial but actually reading other people's patterns you learn a lot too so, yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that Zach had a question for you. Oh yeah. Um, I, I really uh, when when your when your pattern came out and and uh, the, I, I saw that it was um, based uh, that it was inspired by um, Ruth Asawa, I was like yes, and I, it's definitely on my um, it's definitely on my queue of of, of things to knit. Um, but I wanted to ask you because um, I, I I did some stalking and uh I, I i went and looked at a little bit of of your work that you have online and um i was i found it so interesting that a lot of your work you say you're inspired by texture but i also find your work to be very strong graphically like that they have a very um in terms of like the form and 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 the fact that you kind of have this canvas on on your knitting and that it has a that that you're kind of you know, putting the form on, on this, on this, on the, the, this, you know, rectangular piece. And, and I was wondering, you know, in terms of your, your work as a painter and as a, as a, as a visual artist, um, I wanted to hear a little bit more about your process there um, and, and what you're doing um, as a painter and also maybe how it, how it feeds in to your, your work as a knitwear designer. Sure, I'm. I, I will correct you. I'm not a painter. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> um, I mainly work in paper-based media. Mm -hmm. Um, in the past, I used to really love working with book arts. Um, and I, I don't know how familiar you are with book arts, but it, it, book arts kind of goes on the spectrum from fine publishing, just beautifully handmade books that look kind of like your everyday books, mm. um, but beautiful. And then on the other end, it's the book as an art object, where these may be sculptural and perhaps things that you can't read, but they reflect kind of like the different concepts of what a book is. My work can usually tends to fall in the middle of that um, when I'm working with book arts. And unfortunately, I don't have anything I can show right um, uh, at hand mm. but lately I've been doing more mixed media works where I'm printing on paper stitching on paper 
Um, and I think one of the things that crosses over with designing, with any kind of creative work is um, composition, layering, how you add details, how you combine details. Um, and one of the things that I do both in my design work and in my arts practice is I will, so with knitting, you make swatches. And then for my art, I make a lot of studies. So just kind of small scale pieces, trying out different techniques or trying out colors. And very often I will, I'll make a little study or a little swatch and I'll, I'll just leave it on my desk for a few weeks and I'll, I'll look at it from time to time. And it would just be percolating in the back of my head. And then, you know, one day I will look at it and it's like seeing it with fresh eyes. And I'd be like, what if I change this little area and try again? Like, how, how's that gonna look? Um, and it's, you know, as much as I try to imagine it in my head, it, it's so much more helpful to have a visual right in front of you, especially with knitting. It's, I find that I do a lot of sketching and I do a lot of charting when I design, mm -hmm. but I never truly will know what it looked like until I make a swatch. Um, and I love having that in front of me just to look at and be like, okay, I'm going to change A, B, and C, and then I'm going to make another swatch. And then the whole process repeats itself until I find something that I'm really happy with. Mm. Mm. That's the magic of swatching. I mean, I love, honestly, I just like to swatch yarns and <laughs> make different shapes. Sometimes I will see a cable pattern. I'll be like, I'm just going to swatch that a little bit and see what it feels like. Yeah. But I, that's completely relatable. Love that. Um, so we've posted uh, Q's uh, website into the chat if you guys want to check out some of her mixed media art. It's really beautiful. And for me, it feels really emotional because um, one of the ones that you have posted recently is the family photo one. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I'm half Korean, so Asian families like to take these photos. I feel like I have that exact photo with my family as well, all of us kind of standing together in a moment and so it's very i don't know it seems feels very familiar q that that what specific painting that you have on your website so please go check out her art it really reflects in her knitting as well as as you can see in asawa so thanks q if if we have time i would like to share a little story about that piece you just mentioned with family oh photo. you know what then why don't you go ahead and start and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to your website and i'm going to share the image so that people can see okay. it okay that sounds great um so the the art piece that it has um it's based off of a family photo of my mom's family when they were so both my parents, I, let me backtrack a little bit. Both my parents are Vietnamese refugees who left directly at the end of the Vietnam War. And this piece is based off of a family portrait that was taken while my mom's family was at a refugee processing center in Arkansas at one of the military bases there. And the reason they, they took this photo, um, they bought a pack of Polaroid film and found someone in at the center with a camera to take these photos for them because their entire extended family um, were relocating to different parts of the United States. Basically, you have a family unit um, and the, the, or, or the individual and they're sponsored by different people throughout the US who help them resettle um, in the local communities. Um, so since they knew they wouldn't be seeing each other for a long time, or they didn't know when they would be seeing each other, they, I, I think it was a pack of like eight exposures. So they just shot the same exact same family portrait eight times and distributed these photos to their extended family so that when they get separated, they would have a memento that they could wow. keep and have with them. Um, so this piece is based off of that. Wow, that's incredible. Can you guys see it all right? I'm sharing it on the screen. I hope yeah. it's coming up for everybody. That's a beautiful that's story awesome. behind that. Anyways, thank you for sharing. That's wonderful. I love that. You're welcome. All right, so I thought that we could um, chat a little bit with Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Sylvia joined me for the Worsted Book Adventure, and she designed the Amina sweater, which is what I'm wearing here. And Julia has the original um, that was featured in the book. Let me pop back to Amina here. Here we go. This is a great photo. Now we can see. So I had said previously that when I started Worsted, I was working with designs that I had worked with before, but Sylvia was one that I had not worked with before. Um, I had gone through my list of designers that I knew, and then I, I still had a couple designers that I was like, I'm going to reach out to, to see if they like to join. And Sylvia was one of those designers. I had met her, I think it was at that Vogue Knitting Live in 2019. Was that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. Yes, yep. it is. And if you guys saw the photo that I posted on Instagram, she was wearing her Nubian Queen sweater. And I mean, I literally ran over like a little girl and was like, hi, can I introduce myself to you? <laughs> And I have that photo that we took together, and it was such a such a wonderful memory. And over the years, we would see each other at some fiber festivals, and I was just super inspired with her work, and I asked her to join Worsted, and she designed this incredible sweater called Amina. And I thought, Sylvia, you could tell us a little bit about the inspiration. Actually, before we start that, why don't you introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about yourself, and then we'll talk okay. about Amina. All right. Okay. So I'm, my name is Sylvia and I'm with Cherries on Top 2 on Instagram, which is the only social media I use when I use it. Um, I think I'm probably the oldest person here, but um, I start. I learned to knit around 1972-73 um, when I was about eight years old and um, I fell in love with it. It was I, I was brought up in Aberdeen in Scotland and knitting was something we they taught us, but the girls had to learn knitting, sewing, dressmaking, all that sort of thing, because that's what happened in those days. And none of my friends took to knitting because knitting was what grandmothers did. Mm. And anybody that wore knitted garments didn't tell anybody else because knitting was seen as <laughs> low class nothing that to boast about and so if you had anything hand knitted you just hid it but it was just one of those things that i just fell in love with straight away i just loved the rhythm of the knitting and i loved the reading the patterns i learned to read that straight away so although we only learned to knit the basics I took it on board and started playing with it at home. And that's one of the reasons I tell people my knitting style is atrocious. I just knitted my own way because I didn't want to tell people I knitted because nobody else knitted. You just hid it from everybody. And anywhere I met, I went and, sit, and met knitters, they were all old enough to be my grandmother. So it was something I did as a guilty pleasure and I did that for years and years. And my first knitted item was a little teddy bear. So I knitted a teddy bear and then I knitted clothes for it. <laughs> and then I knitted dolls clothes for my dolls. And that's what I did. And so I carried on and knitted and knitted uh, all through university. And then knitting went out of fashion around the early 1990s. And uh, when just after I had my daughters, nobody knitted then because it, everybody wanted something else. And I think the knitting industry nearly collapsed. Mm. And at that time, I had my children, was very busy at work. So I stopped knitting for a long, long time. Uh, actually, I stopped knitting because I got introduced to machine knitting and I fell in love with machine knitting. I'm a bit obsessive. So when I like something, I do it all the time. So I ended up with three knitting machines and then I started selling my knitwear and I had little, you know, like you have, um, what is it called? Tupperware parties. I, do you remember Tupperware? Yeah. I used to have my knitting parties. So I'd have all these young mothers come in and I'd demonstrate all my stuff I'd designed and then they'd all put orders. Because it was machine knitted, within a week I could finish it. Then I had all these women at home knitting for me. And so I was, I was quite entrepreneurial for a young person, but that's what I did. So I, I did that for a little while and it get, 
I stopped hand knitting because I thought, whoa, I can do this by machine so much faster. <laughs> <laughs> then we got into my, um, we started up a family business, which took up so much of my time. And luckily for me, somebody came up with enough. I just couldn't refuse. And I thought this is a chance to retire. I always wanted to retire at 50 and retired at 54. So I had money that I could mean that I could just do what I liked and not have to worry. And my children had grown up, left home. And I thought, well, what can I do with my time now? Everybody I know is working. What do I do? And I thought, knitting. I remember I used to knit. I love that. So I went back to knit, went back to knitting. Um, I love that phrase, back to knitting. And thought, well, what do I do? How do I meet people? And I found some knitting groups. And I was so impressed when I turned up because I was the oldest person there. I thought, oh my God, I'm never trendy. First I was the youngest, now I'm the oldest. And then I found that that people actually uh, went to festivals, knitting festivals, and I thought, no way. Knitting festival? I can't believe this, this is nuts. So I went along and I thought, this is fun. So my aim was to go to every knitting festival I could find all over the world, which is what I started doing. And, um, and the New York one, when I turned up, was because I just thought, you've got to knit something big. If you're going to New York, you can't be a wimp. You can't, you've got to be there and show off and, or nothing at all, which is where New Green Queen came along. Mm. Uh, now, when people say to me, you're a designer, I, I just laugh because I think I'm just a knitter and everybody who knits is a designer because I don't know about you, but I very rarely follow a pattern to the letter, uh, which is why I admire people like Jan because Jan's the best test knitter. She will follow everything and then tell me all the things I've done wrong. Uh, <laughs> but um, I think, you know, just modifying patterns alone is a bit of designing. And I got the chance through the British TV um, channel four and there's a program at Christmas time where you are asked to design a Christmas sweater. And one of the researchers found me on Instagram and asked if I would contribute something. Initially I said yes, because I was so excited that I could get there and I was thinking I could do something for my daughter and I, she's very knit worthy. And I thought I'm going to design this sweater. And I'd already found through just going to festivals, and I've said this story so many times, I had a very wow moment. I f went to an African festival and walked down this, these stairs. And as I approached it, I just, there was, um, fit, there was um, stalls with African fabrics, African objects and jewelry. And I just, all this color. And I just stood there going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this. <laughs> Why is nobody designing with these sort of colors and these patterns? I just, I just like fell as if I was at home. And I looked around, I thought, I don't see anything like this. This sort of means so much to me. And it sort of started my search to um, research African fabrics and objects and just found so much beauty and things that I thought could convert into knitted textiles and knitted um, patterns. And so when I was asked if I would knit a Christmas sweater, I just thought, well, this is my opportunity. So I think I showed it the last time. I won't bother. It's there, but I won't bother. You better show it, Sylvia. You better show right. it. Oh, we got to see it. Just everybody sure wants it. to see it. I'm not going to show it unless everybody says so. You want to see it. I see everyone shaking their heads. They're all shaking their heads. <laughs> oh, gosh. I will get it out. Then everybody, everything might just fall over. But yeah, so I had this idea of designing something for my daughter because she is absolutely gorgeous if you've ever met her <laughs> even though i'm her mother i'd say that <laughs> but um when i started when before after i'd said yes 
I got all the details and they said I had to design it for myself. I thought, oh, I don't want that, but I did it all the same. So this was my African inspired sweater and it was based on quite a popular um, fabric, which I will also get just to show you the inspiration. You guys, while she's getting that, I'm going to show you her Nubian sweater, uh, Nubian <laughs> queen sweater from Instagram. So this is Sylvia's Instagram. And this was the sweater she was wearing when I met her. <laughs> I like spotted it across the room and I ran across. So I just wanted to show everyone so they have a little bit of a reference. <laughs> okay. So this is the fabric that I had for oh. an, as, it's an African um, fabric. And I thought they would look really nice as Christmas bubbles. I thought, I'm sure I could do something with that. And I kept coming up with all these designs. And I think I'm obsessed with the female breast because everything I do seems to look like a breast. And when I did it, you know, like, look, it just looked like boobs <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> so I thought, no, I can't do that. Eventually, because like, I do like cables as well. So I came up with this design, which is a Christmas tree with the oh, bubbles. Look at the bubble. Down. Oh my gosh. So you can see. Fabulous. That's amazing. So that was that. So that was my first attempt at designing something from scratch. And I absolutely loved the process of being given an idea and having to work around that. And I thought, oh, maybe I could do something with this. And I got the opportunity from one of the British magazines to submit. And I thought, you know what, what can they do? They can just say no. And they said, yes. So that's how I got into designing. And my first design was 2000, and was it 2019? Just after, yeah, I'm, I've been designing that long. Really? So that's, yeah, so that's where we went from. Um, I'm an old fashioned knitter. Oh no, I'm not old fashioned. Well, I am. What does that I'm mean? Old, what I'm do you mean fashioned. you're an old fashioned knitter? What does that mean? I love, I love knitting in pieces. Mm. Oh. I know the trend is yeah. for knitting in the round. I don't, enjoy that because I like to structure I like the structure that you get from knitting in pieces yep. you can fit it the way that your body is I also like to carry my knitting around with me and I I can take a front or a back and walk around and knit with it and also because I do a lot of intarsia knitting it lends itself better for flat knitting anyway. So I love to do flat knitting. And at one point I used to think, maybe I should do this in knitting in the round. But I thought, you know what? I think the wonderful thing about knitting, the wonderful thing about life is if you enjoy something, you stick with it, stay in your own lane because somebody else is going to want to do what you do. Um, and rather than try and do what everybody else is doing, do what makes you happy. So that's what I've tried to do. Um, so I've been designing for a little while and my greatest joy is that I became a grandmother last year. Oh, that's <laughs> so my knitting is just gone out of the window. <laughs> Everything <laughs> I want to knit is for little babies and um, Apart from doing commissions for magazines and things, I just knit for my little grandson and I've just finished this one. Oh, this cute. What a oh. Great more cables, more cables. Yeah, baby cable sweater, super cute. Oh, cute. I'm, I'm looking at the little buttons. <laughs> oh my God. Adorable. Oh, adorable. So this is my joy. This is what I've just finished knitting. Um, what else have I got on my needle? I was just saying that I'm playing with them. Um, Nancy Marshall's um, weaving, intarsia oh, yeah. weaving. Her intarsia weaving thing that she's doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But unlike Nancy, who likes to have bobbins, I have everything. This is my 
this is how I manage my yarn. It's just long strands. Don't use bobbins. It's because I just like the, I see this as representative of life, but you can get it all into knots and then you just pull it and it all pulls through. Yeah. And to me, that's just beautiful analogy for life. No, I love that. Um, that's lovely. That's lovely. So that's a little bit about me. Well, that's a great way for us to segue because you were talking about how you like to knit in pieces and we can talk about Amina because Amina is one of the sweaters that is knit in pieces in the book. We do mm -hmm. have some that are knit in the round with seamless knitting. Yes. But I specifically remember a conversation that we had when we were talking about Amina and you asked if we should knit in the round. I was like, no. <laughs> anyway, I learned to knit in pieces too. Yes. And yeah. I'm actually kind of getting back to it now because I, 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 you know what? I find myself really bored when I'm knitting in the round over and over and over, <laughs> like those endless yes. rows of stock in it. And it is true. It becomes to a point where the sweater gets so big, you can't carry it around with you anymore. Yes. And you have the little pieces you can carry it. So Zach, you yeah. like to knit in pieces too. I do. I mean, what what uh, Sylvia was saying about the the structure of the of the garment, like the garment just holds up so well when you actually have uh, sewing on the sides, yeah. um, and it carries the weight of the garment. So yeah. it, when it lasts so much longer, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. In fact, it lasts so long. My daughters keep saying, "Mom." You have to stop knitting because they don't run out. I can't get them to wear out. <laughs> so just put, it in the machine. put it in the machine, it'll wear out. Oh, no. <laughs> mm. um, Somebody in the chat wrote that they feel like their joining is too bulky. Do you do do you have any um advice for, for somebody for, for who, seaming? Do you mean yeah. by the seam? For the seam. Okay. I use the um is it mattress stitch where you go one side and then the other and it closes together. Mm -hmm. I mean this is not the best example. I don't know, what does it look like in Amina? Um, Julia, you've got that one. Yes, it is mattress stitch because I yeah. was actually the one who uh, sewed um, this the, yeah. uh, sample yeah. that Amy is wearing. Yeah. Yeah. It was my yeah. first time doing mattress stitch yeah. because I do not knit in no. pieces. No. I knit no. in a round. Right. But my colleague Annie actually showed me and we worked on it together. Yeah. It was so easy it and is. it looks amazing. Yeah. And um, the, the seam, especially yeah. what, where yeah. the, um, the rib is, it's, it shouldn't be, if you're seaming, when you're knitting flat, what I normally say you do is you add extra stitches at each end, one extra stitch, and that what, what that gives you is a nice selvage. And so when you put them together, you're just putting two stitches together, and that's your only bulk. You shouldn't have more bulk than that. Mm. So yeah, the other thing that you can also what what I what I when you're doing the mattress stitch, you can use a smaller yarn than the yes. yarn. Yeah. And, and so that's one way to kind of keep the bulk down is to take yes. like like if you're working in DK, mm -hmm. you can take a you can take a sock yarn in the same color yeah. and seam with that to to avoid any any extra bulk. I would that would be the only thing other thing I could add. Yeah. yeah. But it's I love the magic look of um, when you've seamed it and you look at it and you can't see where the seam is. That's amazing. I, I mean, that yeah. is, that's just it's, magic. It's <laughs> satisfying also when you when the seams come together and everything is yeah. perfect. It's yeah. like really, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, when you put like here, when the cables, you put the cables together and you can see how it sort of joins at the middle seam and you think, there was, I don't know if you can see it. It looks so perfect, we can't see the seam. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you can't. <laughs> That's a mark of a. That's a mark of a very very good pattern. Uh, when when it just kind of goes kachunk yeah. together. Mm -hmm. um, I try and I try and design in that way so that they come together. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. how I normally try and design them. Um, so yeah, the Amin Amina. Um, let's talk. Let's talk about Amina. So yes. I see that there's lots of questions coming into the chat. Please throw all your questions in there because. <laughs> What we'll do is after we finish the little interview portion of Knit Night, yes. Julia will ask questions. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the inspiration for Amina. Amina. Okay, Amina came about after um, you asked me and I thought, oh my gosh, what have I got? I've got nothing. <laughs> so I thought, okay. So as you know, most of my designs are inspired by my need to connect with my heritage 
And since looking and reading about the things that my ancestors have done, it makes me so proud to be who I am. I was brought up in a very um, non-diverse environment and I didn't realize how much I had lost in that sort of fog bringing. So connecting and reading up, I just felt I needed to find out more. And one of the things I use is the fabrics because I see so many patterns in what I see. So the Amina came about when I was reading about um, a group of, I'm Nigerian by birth um, in, in West Africa. And there's, there was a group of um, people called the Kurdi tribe who farmed in that area. And they had a tradition of wearing um, coverings for the female um, sexual parts. Um, they called them, I think, is it cash sex? I've mm -hmm. learned how to pronounce it. Yes. And what they had were patterns like these. So there was a lot, I saw a lot of diamonds and the diamonds weren't all equal. They were different and they were beaded and they were all very, very different. But one of the things I noticed from looking at patterns from indigenous tribes was that there's an awful lot of use of diamonds. And so I wanted to use that in my design. So I started playing with different, I mean, first of all, Amy sent me so much yarn and I, that was another issue because I kept thinking, I love lots of colors, but I can't ruin it. I can't ruin it for knitters by saying, choose 10 different colors because that's what I want to do. <laughs> so I started playing with diamond shapes and the yarn was so beautiful to knit with, the Cori yarn. Honestly, it was really gorgeous, but I just felt that it needed some texture. Now, Emma told me that she had cable. Somebody was doing cables, but I thought, I still want to do some cable. It feels like it needs to have some cables. So I extended from just plain diamonds and stripes to this idea where we had some, <laughs> some cables running through. So yeah. each diamond gave me an opportunity to try something different, either stripes, plain color, whatever. So I was playing with this while I was still trying to decide on colors. And then I did this one here and I fell in love with cocoa. Yeah. That was the color. I knew that I had to have it, but I wasn't sure about the rest. So we had a chat. As I said, Amy kept saying, all right, shall I send you more? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> so I'd get more and think, oh my God, what am I doing here? There's too much yarn. I can't, don't know what to choose. So in the end, we came across, um, Amy suggested four colors that I thought worked beautifully, including my beautiful cocoa. If you haven't got this color, you really have to knit with it. It is just, it is so and look at it. Yeah, you, you started like a cocoa revolution because everybody who saw Amina in the book was like, what is that green, yellow? Like, what is that yeah. color? Like, yeah. what is that? Yeah, there it is go. just, it is so beautiful in, in real life. It's so gorgeous. Um, so that was how Amina came about. Now, one of the things I wanted to do was to make the intarsia, because everybody knows I'm happy to do loads of small detailed intarsia pictures but I wanted to make something that I thought people would be able to want to make. So a lot of the designs I do, people love, but they wouldn't make them. But I wanted to find something I thought that people would be able to make. And I thought maybe if I had it full on in Tarsia everywhere, it might make it a little, just too much. Um, so I, um, I, it was going to be in two different lengths. So Emma, um, anyway, you've got the cropped one. Yep. And Julia's got the longer version. So you can see that um, Amy's one will fit beautifully with either a, a pinafore or a skirt uh, dress. And the other one would look nice with jeans or something. So it's, there's just two lengths to it. And the pattern itself, you can actually decide how long or short you want to make it. And when Jan made it, Jan said, I need it longer. So she just added an extra length. 
but because the di it's the diamonds, you can take off or reduce or add more diamonds. Um, so I'm, but I wanted it just one face, you know, one side rather than all over to make it easier. And I wanted it as a drop shoulder as well, because I thought, well, a drop shoulder is easy. You can it's make very it easy, easy to it's wear. Very too. easy. Yeah. Um, the only thing I think Emily wanted a, a, a double neck. So that's we've got that. Um, yeah. It's a double neck. So it's it's nice and it will sit. It's really it. nice. It's nice and tidy edge right here. It's really, yeah. it's really nice. Yeah. The only thing I got bored with, I don't, I get bored with cute. I hate one color. <laughs> I get bored. I just, if it's one color, it has to have loads of texture. But the rib, I thought, now we've got to do something with the ribs. So I did a modified rib to add a bit of color and texture. So I think there's a, it's, knit to pearl to but there's bits where you're doing garter as well just to add a bit of difference but it's just it's easy yeah um it's just the so perfect was, touch of color right on the on the sleeves I yeah, yeah. it's really great i thought it would um, just pick up from the from the busy front and just add a little bit of interest to it and then i think jan you've got yours on as well i think yeah to we're gonna bring we're length. gonna bring Jan up here. I'm gonna bring Jan up so we can do a comparison of the three of them because honestly, hold on, let's bring add a spotlight. There we go. Hi, Jan. Hi. How are you? So you can really see, depending on the colors you choose, it really changes the way the amina looks. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. I'm Whenever I see a version, I think, oh. Maybe I should have chose that color. So oh. when John was knitting, I said, John, you've got my colors. Then I saw Amy's one. I went, oh my God. <laughs> the thing is, after my daughter's, I think she's beautiful, but she criticizes me so much. I'm not sure why I keep saying she's so beautiful. When she saw Amy's one, she said, no, I'm that, now that's classy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I want to tell you the story why I chose these colors, because there aren't that many gray sweaters in the book. Everyone was really great about going towards color. Um, of course, Maxime's sweater was in gray. And so I was like, I'm going to use four grays to make this because I wow. thought we just had to make sure that they were um, contrasting enough. You know, and I love I love how this comes out. Every time I wear this, people stop me and say, like, what is this? What are, what are you wearing? You know? Yeah. It's just really, really nice. Yeah. 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 So that's it. All right. Well, I have a few questions to ask you. Um, outside of knitting, so you just said that. I think you said you knit, you're knitting for your grandbaby now. But what other things do you knit for yourself? Actually, I don't. What? <laughs> <laughs> I love knitting, but I get so hot. You know, I'm, I'm at that delicate age. Where anything you wear, you know, really, you want to wear just your bra and nothing else because <laughs> you're just going to get too hot. Um, breasts again, I'm just, there's nothing to wrong It's with. okay. <laughs> I'm in good company. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I... Hi, Zach. Wear, I, <laughs> I don't wear a lot of wool. But I love to knit with wool. So I just have lots of family who love my knitting. Um, outside of knitting, what do I do? I am actually still tutor. I tutor children. So I work with um, young people. I prep them for um, secondary school to get into oh. good schools. Um, so we prep the parents on how to get the kids through all the good schools as well. So that's, that's I do I that two days a week. I would have loved to have a teacher like you. I just love listening to you talk. It's just so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love stories. And I, with my knitting, my knitting has to tell a story. I yeah. can't, knit. I can't engage in a pattern unless there's a story to it. No. Oh, so that's, yeah, that's lovely. Um, so, are there any designers in our industry that inspire you? Oh my gosh, there's so many. When you ask you that question, I think, oh my gosh, I have to think of some. Um, <laughs> now there's so many, um, but 
But I have to say, one of the people that really inspires me is Stephen West. I love the way his mind works. I love, I just think to myself, good God, how did that happen? So I, I love the way his mind works. I like people who add something different to the picture. Yeah. Um, yeah. and who are authentic to themselves. So it doesn't really matter who they are, I will fo follow them. But um, sort of looking through the, the past, um, people like Nancy, I love her mind as well. I love what she does with texture. She is brilliant. And I like Di Gilpin over in the UK. I yes. like the work that she does. And Nora Gone, I love her work. So I could, I go, if I go to a festival and they're teaching, I'll just go just to sit and listen to them and be inspired. Um, so those are the main ones I like. I just like people to, who add something new, you know, a new narrative. No, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I feel that way too. I feel like there's so many new up and coming designers coming mm. through. Every time I pick up a new publication, I'm like, there's an, there's so many new designers and that's so wonderful about our industry. I think it's, it's essential, isn't it? <laughs> we need new designers. We need new knitters. We need to encourage. It's a shame that we can't um, bring it into the school curriculum more because it's diminishing. Um, one of the things I do working with children is I'm, a, I'm actually a qualified child therapist. And when we sold our business, I thought, oh, I'll bring it to the house, which was such a silly idea. So I'd close that down. And I was working with this teenage boy who was real trouble, the boy. He wouldn't go, he was school refuser. I didn't want to know he was having a hard time with his parents or they were having a hard time with him. So I was seeing him. And as a therapist, you need to depersonalize the space. So the child or the person you're working with is able to talk about themselves and it's not about you. So before he came, this is my workspace. So I've got a whole wall just filled with yarn here. Mm. So I had to cover the whole thing. And my damn it is that I dress up. I covered them as well. So Every time he came, I thought, God, I'm going to have to do this every week. And the third week, I thought, you know what? I can't be bothered. I'm sure he doesn't even notice it. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't cover it. And I, I thought, oh, I got away with that. So the following week, I thought, I'm not going to cover the dummies again, because he didn't notice last time. And he just stopped and he said, Sylvia, did you make this? I went, yeah. He says, I wish you could make that. And I thought, this is a troubled teenage boy. He wants to learn to knit. Oh, and, you know, it's just so therapeutic. I think it would be amazing if we could get children knitting younger, just oh, so yeah. we can introduce them to all the yarn. I absolutely mm. agree. I try to convert everyone I know into a knitter. Um, my yeah. children know how to knit. They tell their friends and they show them. So now their friends are interested in coming over yeah. to learn to knit. So... Yeah, let's get them young. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so I have a burning question to ask you, Sylvia. If you could mm -hmm. be a knitting technique, what technique would represent you? Well, I think probably people would say in Tarsia, wouldn't they? But I think I'm a cable. <laughs> 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 I, love, I love the intuitiveness of cable. Once mm -hmm. you start it, you don't even have to read a pattern. You can, you know which direction it's going and how when it's going to come in. And I just love the mathematical rhythm of that. And that to me makes my heart sing. So for me, it's, I love cables. It would definitely be cables. That's amazing. All right, I wanna take a question from the chat. Um, it's kind of gotten away from me here. I think uh, it's Claudia. She's asking, is there a book Sylvia can suggest for learning how to knit and make adjustments for garments such as jumpers and cardigans? I've only knit a cowl, three hats, and a baby jumper, and I want to make oh my garments goodness. for myself, but I get afraid of ruining it before I get started. I think a nice book would be, Anne Bud has some really good books. And one of them is this one book of patterns, and it's a pattern for basic um, sweaters, hats, gloves, and, and I think that's 
It's a really good book to start with, but she's got other ones as well. And what it does, it goes through up for each pattern, it'll look at different um, um, gauge. So if you work out your gauge, it gives you all the numbers for your sweater. So as a first start, if you have a, 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 a chart or a design that you want to use, a stitch pattern you want to make, if you knit a gauge swatch with that and work it out, you've got all the numbers. So that could be a first start. To take. And then once you've got the hang of that, you can then progress to others. But to me, this is quite a useful book. It's a book of patterns. Mm -hmm. So we added that into the chat and we'll add that yeah. into the show notes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm -mm. Well, thank you. I thought that we this would be a good time for us to take a few a break for a few minutes before we jump in um, to questions. Sorry, Zach, did you have a question? I don't know. You kind of you know actually, Sylvia. Like you covered it because I was I was uh, I was just so stri stricken by how much narrative there is in your knitting, mm -hmm. and and how strong the narrative is, and and it's always really interesting to see like um, with with Q like that yours is very graphic, but also has narrative involved in it, but and 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 the different ways that narrative kind of comes into our knitting and you know even when we all look at our own knitting and we were like oh i remember that i was knitting that at that time with that yeah, happened yeah. and it's yeah. like for you like it's also coming in this direction when you're designing like yes. you're you're wanting to tell a story with with yes. experiences that you've had with your knitting yeah. Yeah. yeah it's absolutely true i i find it difficult to design you know when uh, magazines ask for commissions it's usually very quick and the deadlines are so quick because for me, it's an emotional journey. I need to connect with the yarn. Um, from this yarn, I need. I knew what it wanted to be. And I wanted to have cables, I wanted to have texture, mm -hmm. but I also wanted the story of the women being covered and stuff. So yes, it's a very emotional journey for me. Mm. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that at this point we'll take a break. We just take a few minutes so that we can go refill our water glasses and we'll come back and we're going to meet Jan and Cecilia who test knit for Sylvia and Q. Wait for Julia and Sylvia to come back and join us. I, f I found that knitting swatches during knit night is the perfect knitting for me. <laughs> I don't have to worry about like counting or following a pattern or anything. So perfect. perfect. And get rid of. See, a lot of people don't like the word swatch. I love so that. I just say so it's not a swatch, it's a little piece of knitting because we all love to knit. It's a little piece of knitting, but I love the word swatch. I think we have to destigmatize this feeling about the swatch. Swatching is good. It's necessary. It, it is, is necessary. Absolutely. It's absolutely. like the first, it, for me, it's my first contact with the yarn. So we get to know how it feels, what the handle is what size needle. I like to take a yarn and like swatch it on a whole bunch of different size needles to see how far I can push the yarn to see what it will do. <laughs> All right, so we are joined now with Jan and Cecilia who both test knit for Q and Sylvia. Cecilia test knit Asawa and Jane te or Jan te test knit Amina. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm gonna let Julia take over this segment. Um, yep. There you go. Hi, Cecilia. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you watched our knit night last week, uh, you guys have already met Cecilia because she joined us. Um, uh, because you tested yesteryear's by Max in Worsted as well. And so, hi, Cecilia, lovely to see you. Can you please introduce hi. yourself a little? Yes, uh, my name is Cecilia. I live in a new city of uh, Madrid in Spain. 
<laughs> and um, if people don't know you, you're actually uh, uh, one of Team La Bien Aimée's Sampornetters. So you've been working with us for one year now, a little um, over a year. Yes, more or less, November 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you actually responded to a call that Amy posted on Instagram, no? Yes, yes. So that's uh, how I, you became our sample matter. Yes, uh, making sample, I think, was a consequence of having too many knitted garments. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in Spain, it is not too cold. Uh, so the good sweater season uh, is quite uh, short. Uh, while the sows can be warm much longer, but there came a point where I already had uh, one closet full of clothes <laughs> and I had given my mother so many things uh, uh, to, to also fill her closet. <laughs> and, and one day uh, I saw the recuse uh, to make a sample in which indicated that I knighted, but they kept the, the, the garment <laughs> and I, I thought that it, it, it is wonderful because I could keep uh, knighting and at the same time, some, uh, same time I didn't keep filling my closet. <laughs> so I I guess we can say you're a process knitter. <laughs> yes. I, I, I started with, with, with one, uh, then another. Uh, each time I made more and finally I ended uh, uh, I ended up making sample for, for Emma uh, after her request uh, as a sample knitter uh, in 2020. And science, then I have no stop, uh, uh, stop at night in some pets for her. <laughs> no. no, it's true. And every time like a new pattern comes out or a new magazine comes out, like sometimes Amy texts me at night or during the weekends and says, did you see this new pattern? Uh, we have to send it to Cecilia. <laughs> and every time I'm like, not in Yellow Brick Road, please. But guess, <laughs> I don't know how many times you've knit Yellow Brick Road sweaters, Cecilia. Right. <laughs> so talking about yellow brick road yes you <laughs> tested and knit yes. this sample of asawa yes uh, in in yellow brick road uh, i did the test night for for q uh, working with c is uh, uh, has been very easy uh, because uh, his, uh, his design is, is incredible uh, it is a design that looks wonderful uh, and seems complicated, but nevertheless, it is a very simple pattern um, because it is very well explained mm -hmm. um, and because it is a continuous repetition uh, of the same stitches mm -hmm. uh, that they end, end up uh, became memorized. Yeah, yeah. I love the design <laughs> because it looks beautiful uh, on both sides. It looks so sides. beautiful, yeah. And so um, a little while ago, Amy uh, said, oh, we don't have a, a sample in the third size. So of course, we asked you again to knit it. And so this is just, um, this was super interesting to work on with you actually, because um, we decided how to do the fade. Yes, and... in, in this case, you send me uh, the colors and the idea uh, of using Andrea Mouri's uh, fa uh, fade. Yeah. And I started tonight it be waiting the skeins is very important <laughs> i check it uh, what i i spend of of cory uh, on each uh, repetition and then we establish establish it oh yeah. we established <laughs> yeah yeah yes. because uh, a pattern of number of repetition fade repetition fade mm -hmm. 
uh -huh. uh, etcétera, and the other uh, order of colors. Uh, well, we were communication uh, communicating a lot of uh, a lot of to check how um, it looked and if the repetition and the fade worked. It it uh, really it really has been charming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, we actually, so Amy said uh, we published a blog post today about this okay. sample and um, in it I, uh, we used all the notes that you, you actually gave us and so um, you used the fate sequence from Andrea Maury's Comfort Fate Caldi where she explains she has a, a whole sequence of a, a repetition of a number of rows to fade from one color to another. So um, based on this um, repetition of fade sequences, then uh, we you worked out um, how, uh, how many rows of each color to make and everything in order to use as much of every color possible. And I think for this one, yes. you used um, almost all the five skeins. Yes, the, the perfect for this design is that uh, I have knighted to Asawa mm -hmm. in the medium and the large size. And in a single color and, a, and in a five creating uh, a fade. Mm -hmm. And it is great because um, being able to choose the, the, the size of the scarf uh, based on your wishes, mm -hmm. the amount of, of wool or the coal where you like, mm. and makes it, makes it a, a winning design. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, I agree. So thank you so much uh, for everything you said about Asawa. It's <laughs> super helpful, and I'm sure it makes everyone want to knit one or two or <laughs> Thank so, you, I actually have an idea of knitting another one, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, but yes, we're going to knit another Akawa. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I'm so glad you enjoyed knitting it twice because, you know, when you're, when I'm designing a scarf and there's a lot of repetition, I always wonder, is this going to be super boring for someone to knit? Because it's just the same thing over and over. Um, no. It's perfect because... Uh, is 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 AC uh, memorized it? Mm -hmm. You memorized it quite easily. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about you a little bit, Cecilia. Um, you talked about how you became a sample knitter, but please tell us a little bit. What have you been knitting recently? Uh, yes, I. In my needles right now, I have some improvised uh, socks Ooh. in wool, uh, Twist Nouveau. In oh, can, color you, can you raise them up a little bit? Oh, awesome. In color, Chihiro and No Face. <laughs> I love how uh, they look uh, in this color and, and how uh, the stripes appear. I didn't know how Twist Nouveau uh, would feel in, 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 in socks. But I love it. I yes, really like it. It's a 100% uh, non super wash merino base, mm. the yes. Twist Nouveau. It's perfect. I'm knitting on that. But that's too. what you're using, Zach, as well. Awesome. Yeah. And this week I have started uh, the improvisation sour oh. in blue colors. Oh, the because, improvisation. Yay. Yes, because, well, I love blue. Uh, yes. blue. <laughs> I think, I think that... you love blue as much as I love pink. <laughs> yes, I, love I think that everyone uh, who knows me knows uh, mm. that I am addicted to blues. <laughs> I am going tonight in, in colors in Amege. Oui, uh, Amege. Amege, uh, Egelia and Miss, Winterfell and con Corry Confetti Greybot. That is oh. not, not blue. But are you using uh, gray? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> not, not this blue, but but it's confetti. It's, uh, I there love is confetti. blue in there because, it, yeah, it's confetti. There is some blue, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. Confetti goes with all the colors, it's true. <laughs> I, I love how it uh, looks so far. Um, I can't wait uh, to see if it is. 
Oh, amazing. And that's a brand new pattern for you because you're not the one who knit the sample for net provisation. No. Um, no. You didn't test mm. it and tested it. Yeah, oh, and yeah. Test, no, and no. Oh, awesome. I, I, I not uh, night this, this. Mm. It's, it's the first, the first time for, for net provisation. <laughs> Are you enjoying it? Yes. <laughs> Stephen West uh, is a uh, is great. <laughs> yes, actually, C Cecilia and I have a little plan uh, talking about Stephen West because we text a little bit because well, we're both obsessed with knitting, <laughs> and we've been obsessed with Stephen's new book that he yes. just released, Painting Shawls. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we want to have a little bit of a knit along later this year. Once I finish all my whips and Cecilia <laughs> finishes all her samples. <laughs> so this might take a little while, but we'll get there. <laughs> in, a, in a time, we are uh, united. One day. Yes. The, yeah, the one day we'll be all be able to knit together <laughs> again. You guys remember what that was like when we could meet oh and gosh. knit together? Yeah. Go to knitting festivals and meet all your knitting friends. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, Cecilia, for joining thank, us. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me. Can I ask Cecilia, who taught you to knit? When did, when did you learn to knit? Uh, I, 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 sorry. How old were you when you learned to knit? Uh, I was a child. My grandmother taught me uh, in the last night I I I tell, uh, taught me tonight using the the English method and strike oh. needles, uh, which <laughs> is how much uh, people night in Spain. Mm. But I didn't like <laughs> uh, I didn't like it very much because I uh, tied the stitches a lot. Uh, but uh, more and more later, um, I watching videos on YouTube where I discovered circular needles and, and the continental method. And I like it I, because I started try to knit um, like this. And, and I love it because I control the, the, the gauge mm, okay. much yeah. more on which uh, on the straight needles and mm. i can also knight uh, in, in circular mm. <laughs> it's, it's great oh nice that's a nice. that's a skill <laughs> well thanks so much cecilia um okay, now we're gonna get to know jan a little bit and uh, zachary's gonna take over here yeah um jan could you please just um just introduce yourself tell you tell you tell us where you are and tell us a little bit about yourself sure mm -hmm. I can do that um my name is jennifer everybody calls me jan um i'm actually in philadelphia pennsylvania so right here on the east coast um i've been knitting for i don't know since my early 20s i learned how to knit after i got married and i had time on my hands and I was just like, I'm going to learn to knit because I had crocheted for so long. I learned to crochet from my grandmother when I was young. Um, I, I want to say textiles must be in my blood. My grandmother was a power machine operator. My mother um, was a home ec teacher. So she taught sewing and tea cooking and all of those things. And um, my great grandmother actually quilted. So, um, so I guess it's kind of in my blood. It's just something I've been doing for a long time. And I after crocheting for so long, I felt I'd done garments. I was ready to do something else and I picked up knitting. So I've been knitting for quite a while now. Um, that's about it. I, I knit often, <laughs> a lot. That's great. So, a are, lot. Are, you, are you originally from Philadelphia? I am born and raised right here in Philadelphia. Oh, amazing. Me and the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, right? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Will Smith. We come from Philadelphia. Okay. <laughs> amazing. Um, and when when you're not knitting what 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 occupies your time as well um i am an accountant so i do a lot of things with numbers which is why i think i'm so meticulous as sylvia liked to say about my knitting <laughs> he has mentioned it many times to me how meticulous you are <laughs> well i think that's funny because i got into 
testing maybe about uh, 2017. I had to look it up because I didn't remember. I had done a couple of projects some time ago. And I, I'm finding, it feels like the, the landscape of test knitting is changing a bit. When I got into it, my understanding was you're looking for mistakes. You're looking for where there might be problems. You're looking to give the, the designer some insight into how the person who's reading it is understanding it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm seeing so many more people who are just knitting it just to knit it. But mm -hmm. part of it is because I'm a, I'm, I'm a math major, I'm dealing numbers all day long and, I'm, and you have to be so meticulous that I had to learn to slow myself down so I could actually read the pattern and be sure that it was going where it wanted to go and that you're understanding it. So my understanding is that when I test it, I'm offering to the designer exactly what I see and making sure that what they've written makes sense to me. Because if it doesn't make sense to me, it probably won't make sense to someone else. Yes. Hmm. And just, you know, just looking for those odds and ends of things that because you're looking at such a big pattern and you're maybe looking at five or six sizes, you may not catch because there's so many things going on as it's being written. Mm. That's kind of how I attack it. Um, I do change a lot of what I do. When I when I knit for myself, you will find that I, I change the pattern all the time. Maybe I, I, I love a yoke sweater. The color work is drawing me and I'll have a tendency if it's just in the yoke, I'll put it on the sleeves, I'll put it on the hem. I will move it around and I will make changes that, I, that interest me. But when I'm testing, I'm, I'm focused. Mm. I'm looking for what's supposed to be there and what needs to happen in the end. And then when the person gets it and they want to change it when they get it, then that's what they're supposed to do. Mm. <laughs> and that's what they're supposed to do. So that's kind of how I attack it and probably why I'm so meticulous as Sylvia likes to tell me all the time. <laughs> I think it's I think it's really important, you know, like uh, especially like because when you when you design something and and you and you hand it to another person, you know, you 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 might think that coming out of your head that it's reading one way, mm -hmm. but as as a knitter, you know, when you when you pick up a pattern and you start reading it, you're gonna your your own you're gonna throw your brain on that and right. and you're gonna see what the the knitter the designer is not gonna be able to see and and would you say that like you need a certain that that it's 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 test knitting is for a certain level of knitter or that it's it's good to have like a wide variety or oh definitely a wide variety because new knitters like to pick up things that was my way of learning how to knit mm. i didn't necessarily have somebody here teaching me how to knit i had a friend try to teach me but of course i was a crocheter and we know that knitting is all about muscle memory so my muscle memory was for crochet so when she sat down to teach it to me my needles went in all kinds of directions i couldn't get it yeah. i literally had to sit down with my needles one day and force myself to figure it out by myself and so to keep me enthused and keep me wanting to knit. Every time I picked up a product, a, a new pattern, there had to be something new in it. It had to excite me. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, okay, I haven't done this before. So that's the pattern I'm going to attack. Mm -hmm. So as a, as a person who is reading a pattern, if you happen to be a new knitter or someone who's not as experienced, you should still need to understand what's going on. So having a wide variety of people test it at different levels, someone who's been knitting for a long time is gonna catch something who's a new knitter is not going to catch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it has to be simple enough that a new knitter is going to understand it. So mm -hmm. that 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 swing is important, it's important. Yeah. yeah, it's really interesting what you said about also like um, kind of challenging yourself as a knitter, like to learn new things and, and how test knitting is a way to kind of do that because you might learn something new and get under underneath the hood of a pattern to be able to learn how to read it better, but also just like finding patterns to challenge yourself as a knitter. Cause sometimes knitters out there, they'll ask like, oh, how do I become a better knitter? Or like, how do I, you know, oh my God, that looks so hard, you know, but. Knit, that's my answer. Knit. Yeah, like. <laughs> because of that, you stuff. just knit and mm. be fearless about it. Mm. it. It, I tell everybody, and I, and I have taught a little bit, not a ton, but I do teach on occasion. I just say, listen, a pattern is simply instruction. You're looking for stitch and stitch placement. That's all a pattern tells you. Mm. What stitch to make and where to put it. Now, it. What, what do you most enjoy knitting? Um, I've been a sweater knitter for several years now. I got yeah, a little crazy with garments. Sweater knitter too, yep. Yeah, yeah. But I started out, I love shawls. I love lace. I love cables. So those things drew me in. And then I got on the sweaters and I learned I could make garments I could actually wear myself. And that was it. 
it's a I revelation. A lot of bang for your buck, you know, like it's it's such a it's such a you've knit this thing and and I remember I was in Japan and I was knitting a sock and uh it was with this uh, I was at a knitting group and all the women that were there were like why are you knitting socks nobody's ever going to see that <laughs> are you being warm do they feel good okay yeah sock. right and I said I I said that for a long time my my phrase was I don't sock it's like it's a verb I don't sock I don't sock socks. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I still haven't knit a pair of socks, but uh, my friends have gotten on me mm. and I said, I'm going to make a pair of socks because I want to be able to say I've done it all. So socks are definitely on my to-do list and I will knit socks. Okay. And, and, and to, to Sylvia, I wasn't an intarsion knitter when I started doing things for Sylvia. I actually had to learn it along the way. I was like, I've done very, very small projects with Intarsia, so maybe a color, one big, like I did a vest that had one big heart on it. So it was really small. And then Sylvia said, Jan, would you test this for me? And I said, oh, oh okay. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'll tackle it. Jen, Listen, we yeah. actually have a question from the chat. Um, someone, uh, Odebi asks, can you tell us helpful hints when starting Amina? Cause uh, Debbie has never done Intarsia and neither have I. Okay. So was this your first Intarsia project? No, it wasn't. No. It okay. wasn't. I did some simple stuff. Matter of fact, I have one here. I did. I also tested the Aquamiri for Sylvia. Oh, yeah. That's a great design. And this is actually slightly simpler. <laughs> okay. A lot simpler. <laughs> a lot simpler. <laughs> because you, you know, because it's in blocks. So it's not so much going on. You still get great color, great depth. It's got great movement. It still has texture without it being quite as, this is a lot. There's a lot of texture going on. There's a lot of color changes going on. But I would say start with something slightly more simpler just because you can get the stitch patterns down and get an understanding mm -hmm. of the technique and then just jump in feet first. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> and just try it. I think the cowl would be a good place to start. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's an intarsia cowl to go with the yeah, sweater. Yeah. There's a companion pattern for the Mina. There's the yeah. cowl. Let yeah. Me grab this here. There's not so much. And I had I had a I had a learning curve with Sylvia because I didn't knit in pieces. Top down raglan was a good, <laughs> nice comfort spot zone for me. So and doing things, and that's the thing about picking up other designers and seeing how they put things together and just really loving on the things that they do. You try it all. Don't be afraid yeah. of it. It's just a knit and a pearl. Mm. Do you test for other other designers? I have. Mm -hmm. I have. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, I've, I've done maybe four or five. I've done some crochet testing. I've done, I've done a little bit of everything right now. I'm doing some rug cooking testing for um, Sahara Briscoe. I, I'm, I'm into it all. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll try anything. How do you, like somebody asked in the chat, like how do you come across these, these calls for testing? Uh, where do you, where do you find them? Um, I've kind of fallen into it. Mm -hmm. A lot of, I've, I've seen it a lot more where designers will put out test calls. And if you see it, you just kind of hop on it. Or if there's a designer that you really like, you can always ask, do you have something new? I met Sylvia, we actually got to see each other. I saw her, I saw the, the Nubian queen on, on Instagram, like everybody else. So when she came to New York, I knew exactly who she was. Mm -hmm. I was looking for that sweater because it was absolutely amazing. And, we, you know, you just kind of talk and back and forth through Instagram. And I just said, well, if you got anything to test, let me know. And I, you know, having met and being at some of the events where a lot of new people are coming and trying out different designs and I'll see something, I'll say, oh, that's beautiful, you know, did, where, where's that that from and they'll say i made it it's mine i'm, I'm gonna be looking for test knitters and i'll say i love it pick me pick mm -hmm. me and that's kind of how i've gotten into a lot of my tests is i just love what i see and i'll ask straight yeah. up ask yeah that's great sorry sorry uh, i i i think but but the the it was a, as a a sample as a test night that it's very important, not afraid uh, to ondo uh, as many times as necessary. Mm. And I, uh, I, the test, I, I think it's a way to help designer. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, in the test, the communication is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, stop when in doubt. 
uh, ask and then uh, move on and don't be afraid uh, to hondo uh, the necessary uh, mm. mm -hmm. yeah. Fro frogging is a part of the yes. of knitting yeah, mm. yeah. It's, it's very important mm. yeah i think it's um, important to if you do like some designer to offer because i think test knitting is an amazingly crucial part of getting a pattern together tech editors will look at a pattern for certain things like numbers and punctuation language and fluid making things fluid um, or flow but unless a knitter actually attempts it you don't actually find where the errors are and you could miss out i mean i think there was one part the pattern jan did first she tested it after it had been published and it gone through all the tech editing everything and she started knitting it and she said there's a mistake and i thought no there isn't a mistake it's been checked and we're fine so no i make a mistake I said, so I said, well, tell me where it is. So she sent me this spreadsheet and said, there. And I thought, oh my God, how come I didn't even see that? Mm. So it's absolutely important if you want to test knit. Um, it's, you know, unfortunately, the designer may not always be able to pay, but they will give you a pattern or they'll make it worth your while. But what, what you do is absolutely crucial to get a pattern out there that people can knit. Yeah, if you really like a designer, I feel like it's it's a, a way to also like show your appreciation and support for, for the designer and, and, and it's community service too. Cause at the end, like the whole knitting community then like will, will like reap the benefit mm -hmm. of, of you having like put your eyes on that, on that pattern. So, you know, sort of as the as the frontline warrior. <laughs> no, I think I think it's important and it's it's great. And I try not to just say, ooh, you know, and sometimes it's it's difficult to test because this is someone else's product. Like this is the designer's vision and you don't want to trample on that. You mm. know, you never want to change that, but at the same time you want to say, listen, what is this what you're trying to say? Or maybe this might work a little better. So if I see something, I don't just say this is wrong. I say, okay, this is what I see. I think this is where you're going. This is how I think you want to say it. I think this is the way it will work mm. to get what you're trying to accomplish because I never want to trample on that. Mm. Designers are artists and you have to let that art flow and let them do what they do because that's how we get such beautiful pieces and that we actually love and adore and can wear for years. It's, yeah. it's such an important piece and you're just helping them bring mm. that, that idea to fruition. And that's kind of how I look at it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So. All right, one last question for Jan and Cecilia, but I, I think I remember Cecilia's answer. If you could be a knitting technique, what knitting technique would you be? Go ahead, Jan. Uh, I think what comes to mind immediately is brioche. I don't do it often, but something about the rhythm of it, I absolutely it's love. True. Yeah, it feels like a dance. Yeah, it's one of yeah one of my favorite sweaters is the La Brioche M I did oh. um, from Ooh. a couple of years ago. And it, I love Brio it. It's, yeah, a, it's a yeah, it's a beautiful pattern, beautiful pattern, and I really love it. Awesome. There's that new pattern by um, uh, Les Garçons as well uh, in brioche. Oh, okay. I got to look that up. With saddle shoulders. <laughs> and see, what was your, what was uh, your... Yes. I mentioned in the previous night, uh, night, uh, night, I think I will go uh, with the cables or the brioche because mm. both allow me to focus all my attention mm. on what I am doing. Uh, while both give an incredible and fluffy resus <laughs> and they look complicated like many things in this life mm. uh, once you try and understand understand it uh, they become something simple mm. yep Fantastic. wonderful wonderful well you guys we've run really late so i have to we have to say goodbye 
<laughs> so thank you so much for tuning in. I uh, this was so great. I, I mean, every episode I'm always like, oh, that was so awesome. It's like it's so wonderful <laughs> to be able to connect with the designers and the testers who work with the with the designers. And also, you guys have been great in the chat. It's super nice to read all of your comments. Mm -hmm. So. It's Friday night, so have a great weekend. I hope that you guys are all going to get some knitting in this weekend. And we'll be back soon with our next virtual knit night. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye. 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 Good night. <laughs>